Hello everyone and welcome back to our ritual Mr. Bruch here. We are holding in Mr. Bruch Helik Beis and we will be learning today Emir Tzashem Daf Tesvav Amit Aleph as well as a little piece of Tesvav Amit Beis. I hope to finish Simon Kuf Lamit Beis today. We don't have that much here that we need to do. We have a little bit of unfinished business here. Um, not really because today's page is Tesvav Amit Aleph. And we are holding on the very bottom line of Yudalad and Beis, Simon Kuflam and Beis. We are in the middle of Sif Beis, and we're up to Mishdebura, Ice Cut and Yud Aleph, which is in the very bottom line of the Mishdebura on Yudalad Amid Beis. Goes on the words of the Ramah. I'm just going to read the Ramah from Yudalad Amid Aleph, from the middle of the bottom line on Yudalad Amid Aleph. I'm going to read the Ramah to provide us with context. Says the Ramah, Yadalad Amad Aleph, bottom line, middle of the line. Va'imrim Kaddish Yasam Achar Aleinu. We have a Kaddish Yasam after Aleinu. The Mishnah told us yesterday the reason we have a Kaddish after Aleinu is because in Aleinu we mention various Psukim. And the Mishnah told us really after Psukim, when we say Psukim in Betibur, we like to have a Kaddish. One of the reasons we brought down was that every Pasuk contains some manifestation of the Shem HaMafayrash, and therefore when we recite Pesuk in Betzibur, we say Yiskadal Yiskadash Shemei Rabbah. And the Mishnah told us that we reserve this Kaddish for the Yisaymim, because sometimes we have Yisaymim that are, that are unable to daven for the Amid, either they're Ketanim who don't daven for the Amid, or maybe they're adults who do not know how to properly daven for the Amid, Therefore, we set aside this Kaddish after Aleinu for the Yisaymim so that they should be able to say Kaddish as a schus for their parents. So, Va'irim Kaddish Yosem Achor Aleinu continues the Ramah, Va'afilu Ein Yosem Bebeis Akneses, turning to Yodala the Bebeis. The Ramah said, even if there is no Yosem in the Bebeis Akneses, Yomer Oisai Misha Ein Loi Av Va'im, somebody who doesn't have parents, who might not be a Chiv now, Teich Shana, to say Kaddish, but since he doesn't have parents, he can say Kaddish. In the words of the Ramah, and I, I noticed this, I didn't really pick up on it yesterday for some reason, but really a strict translation of the Ramah is even somebody who has parents. When I read this yesterday, I read it, meaning even somebody who has a father or a mother, but he's missing one of his parents. That's not the words of the Ramah. The Ramah says, even somebody who has parents, Baruch Hashem, he has both parents, is allowed to say this Kaddish Yasam, Im ain of the imoy makpidin, as long as his parents aren't makpid. Not every parent is going to be comfortable with the idea that his child is saying kaddish yosem. What do you say kaddish yosem for? You have parents. But Ramah says even somebody, it's not like an iser that somehow somebody who has parents is not allowed to say kaddish yosem. I mean, kaddish yosem is a variation on, on kaddish. I mean, Anybody who's allowed to down for the omen say chati kaddish, say kaddish shalom to skabel. The, the Kaddish Yosem is not dramatically different, right? So why can't somebody say Kaddish? And so he says, really anybody can say Kaddish Yosem, even if he has parents, but it should, it's only in Ein Aviv the Imai Makpidin if his parents are not Makpid. And now we go to the bottom line of the Mishnabura and Yudal and Mibbez, Mishnabura Aiskat Yud Aleph, where the Chavetz Chaim says, Yochal Amrai Im Ein a regular person who Baruch Hashem has parents can say Kaddish Yosem. And the Ramah said, as long as his parents are not Makpid, says the Chavetz Chaim with Tzayinu Loimar, what the Ramah wants to say is, Davka Kishuhu Mishair Shalo Yakpidu Alzeh. If the person is Mishair, it seems from the Chavetz Chaim that it's not shot that you have to go ask your parents, are you Makpid if I say Kaddish? As long as you're Mishair, that your parents are the type of people who would not be Makpid, they would say, look, if the Tzibur needs a Kaddish, Kizun Tehid, say a Kaddish. Um, the calls that Hula Inyad Kaddish Yosem. And the Chavetz Chaim says, this whole question of the parents being Makpid and the Hakpada of the parents 
mattering, the whole idea that if the parents are makbid, that makes a difference, that only applies to Kaddish Yosem. Because here you're de- dealing with a Kaddish. It's called Kaddish Yasem. So we very easily could understand why a living parent would be Makbid. What are you saying, Kaddish Yasem? You're not a Yasem. So it only applies to Kaddish Yasem. Aval lehispala lefneha Ahmed, but to be the Chazan to David for the Ahmed, which we saw is even a greater schus for the Neshama than Kaddish is. So you might think, well, if a parent could be makbid on a child, if a living parent could be makbid on a child saying Kaddish Yosem, maybe a living parent could also be makbid on a child davening for the Amid. Says the Chavetz Chaim, no, Avalos Falif Amid, Al Shema, or even to do what we spoke about at length previously, Parson Al Shema, which is the one who's just going to say the abbreviated Berchus Kriyishma and Baruch Hu at a Kaddish, Ain Loy Lachish Klaut, but that's yeah, Eloy Lachish Klau, Shemiak Pidu Alzeh. Over there, there's, there's no question. A parent can't have a hakpada on that. Okay. Now, the, the implication, there's like a dual implication here from the words of the Ramah. One is that, like I mentioned already, even somebody who has both parents living can say Kaddish Yasem as long as his parents aren't makbit, The implication from the Chavetz Chaim is you don't have to ask your parents if they're makbit. As long as you're mishire, your assumption is that they wouldn't be makbit. that's enough. Um, there was also another implication that I had that I want. Oh, and it sounds also to me from the combination of the Rabbah and the Mishtabura that if somebody is already missing one parent, Let's say somebody who doesn't no longer has a father, but he has a mother. Over there, is it a problem if the mother is makbid? It sounds to me like not. It sounds to me it's only a problem if you have a living father, Baruch Hashem, and a living mother, Baruch Hashem. So then there's room for a hakpada. But if somebody is already missing one parent, what's the room for the hakpada of the surviving parent? I'm saying Kaddish because I'm already bereft of one parent. So I'm saying Kaddish for that parent. The, the, the idea that the other parent could have a Hakpada, I'm not sure. I mean, I didn't ask anybody, but again, from the Ramah and from the Chavetz Chaim, that's the way it sounds to me. Okay, now we go back into the words of the Ramah here on the top line of Tesvav Amad Aleph, halfway through the line, right by the ice cut in Yud Beis for the Mishtabura. We are now going further in the end of davening over here, we spoke about Ashrei, Lam Nutzeach, Now we spoke about Aleinu, the Kaddish Yosem, after Aleinu. Now says the Ramah, V'yesh loimar pitom it, it is good to say the parsha of pitom hakitoris, the, the process of manufacturing the kitoris, Erev vavoyker, both evening and morning, Achar after davening. Let's take a look here at the Mishnah It says the Mishnah Ruh is cut in your base, V'yesh Loimar. It is good to say the the Parsha of the Keteris to discuss the Brisa that discusses, right? I believe it's a Brisa, that discusses the manufacture of the Keteris. It's good to say that Erev Vavaykar, both evening and morning. Why, what does exactly mean evening and morning? Yeah, Krisus Vav Amid Aleph. Peter Bacteris is a price I brought down from Sectus Krisus Vav Amid Aleph. Um, says the Mishtabura, Ice cut your base, Vyesh Lima, why? Mipnesha Kitaris, how you maktirin pamayim bechal yaim. Because the Kitaris was brought on the Mizbeak Azahav inside the Heichal twice every day. Kimacha Kasa Batera, like the Terak Tesha records in the Psukim. So you had a carbon tumid, you had the oilas hatumid that was brought erev vavayker. There was the tumid shel baker and the tumid shel bein arbayim, the morning tumid and the evening tumid. The k'tiris was also done once in the morning and once in the evening. Therefore, the Ramah says we should say pita k'tiris twice. We should say it in the morning and in the evening. Ois katan yud gimel erev. What does this mean that we should say it in the evening? Hainu akar tfilas mincha. 
says the Chavetz Chaim, this means that we should say Peter Maktoris either after Mincha, Oy Kaidim La, or before Tvilas Mincha, Ta'akitoris Lo'yoyo Maktirin Balayla. Don't think Erev means that we should say Peter Maktoris at night. We can't say Peter Maktoris at night because the Kitoris wasn't brought at night. The Kitoris was only brought during the day, once in the morning and once in the evening, in late afternoon. But it was brought during the day. So if we're going to say the Kitaris twice, like the Ramah suggests, it would be once in the morning and once in the late afternoon, but not at night. Ois cotton yudalid. The words of the Ramah were the Yesh Lime Pita Bakteris Erevavikar Achar Hatvila. Evening and morning after the Tvila, after Shman Esrei. Says the Mishnaburu here, Vitzarch Iud, based on this Ramah. Says the Chavetz Chaim, Tzarech Yid, we really have to look into, Lama Anu Oymrin Oysa B'Shabbos V'Yom Tav Achamosif. Why do we say Pita Bakhteris on Shabbos and on Yom Tav after Tfilas Musif? V'Haloi Akhteris Kedemes L'Musaf in L'Kulei Alma. The Kteris was always brought before the Karban Musaf. V'Hi Shaycha L'Karban Tamid. There was a connection between the Karban Tamid and the Kteris. Now the Karban Tamid, was definitely brought before the Musaf. The reason the Musaf is called a Musaf, it's a Hisafa. It's an addition. Every day we bring the regular carbon Tamid. On Shabbos and on Yom Tov, we also have a carbon Musaf. We have something that adds on to the carbon Tamid. But the Musaf was always brought after the Tamid and after the Ketiris. So really what we should do is, we should have in Shachris, Shachris, the Shman Esri of Shachris is connected to carbon Tamid. Then after we dive in the Shman Esri of Shachris, then we should say Pita Bakhtiris, right? Because the Ketiris is connected to the Tamid. And only then should we dive in Musaf. Yet that's not what we do on Shabbos and Yom Tov. On Shabbos and Yom Tov, we dive in Shachris, then we dive in Musaf, then we first say Pita Bakhtiris. The Efshir says to Chavetz Chaim, possibly you could say the Kavana Senu, that our Kavana, when we save the Pita Bakhtiris, the Maisek Torahs all the way to the end, is Lipater Mitaych Divrei Torah. Maybe what we're trying to do is, we just went through a whole two and a half hour, three hour davening on Shabbos and on Yom Tev. We want to close out the davening with Divrei Torah. Pita Bakhtiris is Divrei Torah. That's a brysa, of course, it's built on Torah Shabbat Sav, it's built on the Pesukim and Chumash, that discuss the Maisak Torahs. We want to close out davening with Divrei Torah. So even though really it would be more appropriate to say Pita Maktoris following Shemayin Esrei of Shachris, which is the carbon Tamid, and before the Shemayin Esrei of Musaf, which is the carbon Musaf, but still, despite that, we say Pita Maktoris for the end in order to close out davening with Divrei Torah. Ubak Savim Isa, the Rabbi Shtabura says, in the Svarim Magdoshim, Shara Kavanas, Drushay Tfilos Hashachar, Isa Sha'atam Lahavriach Aklipos. Why do we put the Pita Bakteris, the Rice Bakteris at the end? This is beyond my pay grade. This has to do with chasing away the Klipos, Hatuma, these uh, Inyone, Tuma, this is Nistar. We don't know exactly what this means. Somehow Lahavriach Aklipos, somehow the Kteris. Takes away the the klipais, it cleans the slate after the avening. Ube shla kasev the shla writes la amrei kaidem tefila va'acharei. The shla says again, this is based on nistar. This is based on klipais. That somehow we want to clear away all the klipais of tuma before we daven, and then we want to chase away any klipas of tuma that might be after we finish davening. It has to do with the creation of the klipais and what feeds the klipais, etc., etc. Again, this is way beyond my pay grade. I'm not going to even pretend that I understand what's being discussed here. Mm. But whatever it is, the reason the Chavetz Chaim is bringing this down is again, the Chavetz Chaim is trying to be metaritz the minig, why we say Peter Bakhtaris after Musaf as opposed to before Musaf. Okay, so what do we have over here so far from the Ramah? What we have over here from the Ramah so far is that we know that the Maisik Torahs, the Torahs was brought in the Beis Amikdash twice every day. Erev Vavoyker. Therefore, the Ramah says there is an Indian to say Pitabak Torahs, the Brysa that discusses the Maisak Torahs, 
both in the evening, late afternoon, and in the morning. And the Ramah says, Achar Hatvila. This should be done, Achar Hatvila. Why Achar Hatvila? Why after Shmanesre? Again, because it's connected to the carbon Tumid, and the carbon Tumid comes first. So in an ideal world, listening to the Ramah, it sounds like what we should do is, at the end of davening, after we finished the whole Seder Hatvila, now we're finished with the carbon Tumid portion of davening, now we should say Pitam Haktaris. And we didn't finish, I didn't read these words in the Ramah, but if you go to the second line of the Ramah here on Tesvav Amin Aleph, Va'imrim Tchila Ein Kelikenu. We preface Pitam Haktaris with Ein Kelikenu. So, Nusach Svard, Nusach Svard, Taki says Ein Kelikenu, and Pitam Haktaris every day after Tvila. We do, Nusach Svard does, Ashrei Lam Natsech, Uvalutzin, Kaddish Tiskabel, then the Shir Shal Yoim, which we're going to get up to momentarily. And then after the Shir Shal Yoim, after the Yoim, right? We Colloquially, we call it the Yoim. After the Yoim, Nusak Sfarad says, Ein Kelekeinu and Pita Bakhtaris. So we have the Ramaz, Ein Kelekeinu, Achar Hatvila. That we have. Um, Ein Kelekeinu, Ein Kelekeinu, Ein Kelekeinu, Ein Kelekeinu. Just looking quickly. I'm going to jump away from the camera for a brief second just to grab a sitter. Ah, there's the sitter I wanted. It was right here in the camera all along. Ein kelikenu of of uh, Milcha. So, if you take a look, in a Nusach Svard sitter, where Milcha starts with Karbonus. I grew up in, in, in Bar Park, David in Svar Shishul, and Milcha didn't start Ashri Yesh Vesecha. Milcha started Vaidaver, Vaidaver Hashem Vaishalaimer. That's the way Milcha started. Milcha starts with Karbonus. So in Karbonus, you have Pita Makhtaris. You have it without Enkelikenu. It starts. Um, the parish of the Ktaris, and then Tanarabanan, Peter Maktaris Ketzat. So Nusach Sfard, Taka says, um Kelikenu twice a day, really three times a day, because in the Karbanas before Chakras, you have Ain Kelikenu all you have uh Peter Maktaris also in the in the Karbana in the Karbanas, right? Before Chakras, you have it in there also. So you have it in Carbonus before Psyche de Zimra. You have it again at the end of Davening by Enkelikenu. And you have it again by Carbonus before Mincha. Okay, why by Mincha do we do it before Mincha, not, not after Mincha? Maybe because of the Zman. Now the Mishnah Brewer says, "Taka in Eis Kotn Yud Gimel, Hainu Achar Tfilas Mincha Oy Kaidem La." I imagine maybe one of the reasons you have to look up this Mug and Avram. It's Mug and Avram Sif Kotn Gimel, Mug and Avram Sif Kotn Gimel, Mug and Avram Sif Kotn Gimel. Sounds to me like maybe the reason for putting it before is because we're afraid of coming up on Shkia. We're afraid of coming up on the Seizman Tfilas Mincha. So, well, no, that would be a reason to do it after, not before. Or maybe we're afraid we're going to end up saying Pita Bakhtaris at night and we don't bring the Bakhtaris at night. But be that as it may, in in the meaning of Nusach Sfard, we take a find the Kim of this Ramah. In Nusach Ashkenaz, we don't find it. 
In the Sechashkenaz, we don't say. They don't say in Kalikenu on a daily basis. They only say it on Chavez. We're going to get to that momentarily in the Ramah himself. Okay, so we did ice cotton your gimel. We did ice cotton your dalid. Now we have to go further in the Ramah. So bottom line here on Tesvav Amid Aleph, middle of the line. Ve'oimrim, says the Ramah. Ve'oimrim hashir shahalavim hayu oimrim ba'migdash. Then, after we've said Pitam HaKetaris, now he says we say the Yom. And the Ramah says Shakris Levat. We only say the Yom in the morning. We don't say the Yom in the afternoon. Okay, let's take a look here. Mishtabura Ice Cut and Tesvav says to Mishtabura Va'oimrim Hashir. Now, the Ramah is not very specific what exactly he means when he says we should say the Shir Shahalavim Hayu Oimrim Bamigdash. And the where the Mishnabura is going to be coming from is there's two different possibilities of how you want to interpret the Ramah. One interpretation of the Ramah would be what we do on a daily basis. We say, um, and we say that capital of Tehillim. So on Sunday, we say, etc., etc. On Tuesday, we say, and we say that whole capital of Tilim. That's one way of interpreting the Ramah. The Oimrim, we say, Hashir, the Shir. That capital Tilim, Shalavim, Haim, Oimrim, Bemigdash. The Shir that the Leviah would say on that day, we say that capital every day at this point in Davening. But then there's another possible way to interpret the Ramah. And that is that if you look at the Shabbos Davening, in Ein Keli Kenu, right after Pita Maktiris, we have another entry in Ein Keli Kenu, and that is a Mishnah from a Sectus Tamin. Hashir Shehalavim Shehalavim Hashir Shehalavim Hayu Oimrim Beveis Hamigdash. What was the Shir that the Levim said on a daily basis in the Beis Hamigdash? By Yom Arisha and Hayu Oimrim Lashem Aretz of Alaya Tevel Veyishveva. That's one pasuk from the capital. On the second day of the week, they said, One Pasuk from the capital. On Tuesday, what did they say? One Pasuk from the capital. So we have a Mishta in Mesech Tamid that describes the shear of each day using one Pasuk from the capital of Tehillim. So it's possible to suggest that what the Ramah is referring to here is that Mishnah in Mesech Tamid. Maybe the Ramah is saying, Va'imrim, and we say, Hashir Shehalavim Hayu Oimrim Bamigdash. We say the Mishnah in Mesech Tamid of Hashir Shehalavim Hayu Oimrim Bamigdash. So says the Mishnah Bura over here in Oiskot Tezvav, he says, take a look at the Mangan Avram. Shamasik who concludes the Kavanas Ramah that the intent of the Ramah is Loimar to say, Bechol Yaim each day, Hashir Hashayach Loisayim, the Shir of that day, the complete capital. The Hainu Shabiyam Rishayin Hayu Alavim Mishayrim. On Sunday, the Levim would sing, Ledavid Mizmar La Shem Haaretz Amaloya, which is Tehillim Kapitel Chavdalid. Ad Saif HaMizmar, until the end of that capital. V'chein b'chol yoyim ha-mizmar And each day we should say the capital of Tehillim that the Levim sang as the Shira on that day. Aval ain't kavanasay she yoyimrim mishnas ha-shir shahoyu ha-levim oyimrim. He doesn't mean that you should recite the mishnah from a sectus tamid that starts ha-shir shahalavim hayu oyimrim. Achein, however... Beshabbos and Shabbos, Nehagin Oilam Loima Mishdezu Akapita Bakteris. But on Shabbos, we do say the Mishnah from Esekdes Tamid after we say Pita Bakteris, Kemoshe Nitfas Besidurim, as you'll find it printed in the Sidurim. Why do we say the Mishnah from Esekdes Tamid on Shabbos? So what's brought down is the reason we do it is because 
is because, 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 one second, I, it just uh, fell out of my head. Oh, that's not why we do it on Shabbos. I'm sorry. What I was going to mention is the issue footnote number 31, which is that now that we have established that the way what we what the way we follow this Ramah is we say the full capital of the Yom each day, we know that our meaning is to preface the Yom with the sentence Hayom Yom Rishon B'Shabbos, Shahayu Halavim Oimrim Beveis Amigdash, Hayom Yom Sheni B'Shabbos. Why do we preface it with that sentence? So if you take a look at Dusha footnote 31, he says here, Why? Because we want to mention Shabbos every day of the week. Like the Ramban writes in the famous Ramban, the Indian Zechira Sa Shabbos Bemeshech Yomai Sa Shvua. That one of the ways that we are Mekayim, the Pasuk of Zohar is Yom HaShabbos L'Kadshoi, is by mentioning Shabbos every day of the week. Rav Shlomo Zalman would make a point of saying every day, Zohar is Yom HaShabbos L'Kadshoi, Hayom Yom Rishon B'Shabbos, Shabbat Yom Levim Oim Rebbe Samigdash, to show that he's saying that sentence to be Mekayim the Mitzvah of Zachar Esiyam HaShabbos Likadshah. Okay. Ois Katan Tezayin, the Ramah said that we only say the Yom Shachris Levad. We only say the Yom in the morning. We don't say the Yom by Mincha. Now, why would you think that you should say the Yom by Mincha? Very simple. Because what's the Yom? The Yom is the Shira that the Levim sang by the Mizbeach. Now, when did the Levim sing Shira? The Levim sang Shira by the Nesachim. What are the Nesachim? Every carbon brought together with every carbon was Mincha and Nesachim. There was a flower offering, a Mincha offering, that accompanied the, the carbon, and there was a Nesachim. There was a wine, uh, a wine offering. That was brought together with the carbon. So the carbon tamid had nesachim. It had a wine offering, wine that was put on the mizbeach together with the carbon. The levim sang shira by the nesachim, but the levim sang shira by the nesachim of the morning and the nesachim of the afternoon. So just like we have a shemayne esrei by shacharis kenege the the tamid shabayker, and we have a shemayne esrei by mincha kenege the tamid shavayn or abayim. Why don't we have the yoyim in the morning keneged the shira of the yoyim and say the yoyim again by mincha keneged the shira of the afternoon? So says the Mishnah Brewer, after b'migdash hayu oimim shira on this guy yayin, gam al tabit shabayin or abayim, even though in the base of migdash the levim sang shira by the nesachim of the tabit shabayin or abayim as well, and therefore you would think that we should say the yoyim again by mincha, Achain, nevertheless, there would be days that the Kaihanim would be very taken up with the Avodah. Maybe there were a lot of Karbonis being brought. Maybe there were a lot of women having babies and there were a lot of Kinim that had to be brought. Or the Yidin were bringing a lot of Oilus, a lot of Shlomims. So there was a tremendous amount of Avodah to do. What would happen is sometimes the Nesachim of the Tamid Shalbein Arbayim would end up being pushed back because the Tamid has to be brought during the day. But the Nesachim of the Tamid could even be brought by Lila. So sometimes what would happen is they would end up pushing the carbon Tamid all the way to the limit and they would end up bringing the Nesachim of the Tamid Shalbein Arbayim by Lila. Now, if you brought the Nesachim by Lila, there was no Shira. Or by Lila ain't Oymrim Shira. The Allah is that the Levim did not sing Shira at night. So even if the if the Nesachim were brought by night, there would be no Shira. So in that case, there was no Shira in the afternoon. Lefikach, therefore, says the Chavetz Chaim, Noihagin loimar ashir b'shachris levad. That's why we say the Yom only by Shachris, not by Mincha. The Eze Mizmar noihagin loimar b'yom tov l'shir shal Yom. Now, 
As far as what you should say for the Yom on Yom Tov, see on Yom Tov, the Levim sang a different shir. So if Yom Tov fell out on Monday, the Levim didn't sing the Yom of Monday. They sang a shir that was specific to the Yom Tov. So now, there's a whole question. Did they replace the regular Shira? Was it in addition to the regular Shira? So says the Chavetz Chaim, the Ezem is when they hang in Loi Rabbi Yom Tov, Lishir Shal Yom. As far as what we should say for the Yom, on Yom Tov, Yavur and Yerza Hashem, Lekaman Behilchus Yom Tov, the Chavetz Chaim says that will be discussed later on in Hilchus Yom Tov. Interestingly enough, the Mishnah never did discuss it in Hilchus Yom Tov. It never came out. So the truth is that, again, there are machlaikis said over here. There are different minhagim. The, the minig of the gra was on Yom Tiv to say the shira of that Yom Tiv and not to say the shira shal yom at all, which is not the prevalent minig. The prevalent minig is if Yom Tiv falls out on Monday, you say Monday's yom. If it falls out on Tuesday, you say Tuesday's yom. Right? But the minig of the gra was no. He, so for instance, let's say a very common one, Rish Chodesh. What do we do on Rish Chodesh? If Rosh Chodesh falls out on a Monday, we say Monday's Yom, and we say Bar Chinavshi. The Gra did not say Monday's Yom. The Gra only said Bar Chinavshi, because he said Bar Chinavshi is the Shira of Rosh Chodesh. On Chanukah, he only said Mizra Shechanukah Sabayis David. He didn't say the regular Yom, because Mizra Shechanukah Sabayis David replaced the regular Yom. Okay. Continues the Ramah, the last two words here in the Ramah on Tesfav Amalaf. The Yesh Shekasru, the Ramah says, there are those that write, Lizar Loimar Pita Bakhtaris Mitaychaksav. That you should be very careful and you should say Pita Bakhtaris in a Vainik. You should say it inside. You should not say it Bape. Baloi Bape. Why? Says the Ramah, Mishum Sheha Amira Bim Kaim Hahaktara. What do we say? Our davening is instead of the hakravas karbonus. But when you say to Rabbin, we don't have a base amidosh, we don't have karbonus. So the Pasik says, Unishalma parim safasenu. Our lips pay, our lips substitute for the karbonus. So instead of bringing karbonus, we have the verbalization of our tefillus. So says the Ramah, so too, if we say pita bakteris, the verbalization of the Maisik Torah stands instead of the actual Hakravas Haktaris. So Bishum Shah Amira Bimkaim Haktara. Our Amira stands in place of the actual burning of the Ktaris. The Chashinan, and therefore we have to be concerned, Shema Yedoleg, Echon Misamimonim. Maybe if you say it, Palpe, you'll skip one of the ingredients of the Ktaris. So we have over here in Peter Bakhtaris, right? Peter Bakhtaris Ketzad. How was the Kteris manufactured? Shloish Meyos Vishisha Bishmaina Mainam Hayuba. There were 368 a mon is, is a measurement. Um, and then we go through the, the ingredients here. Vaachat um, Osa Samanam Hayuba. It was made out of 11 spices. Hatsri, Vatsipiren, Hachelbana, Halavaina, Mar. Kitsia, Shibalus Nerd, Charkoim, Koisht, Kilufa, Kinamoim. So, what happens if you're reading over here? It was Bars Kashina, you know. So, what happens if you're going through the Mysak Tyrus and you skip one because you set up a pet? Ooh, now in your verbalization, you formulated the Ktiris wrong. So says the Ramah, Mishon Shahamiru Bibkai Maktiris, the Khashinan Shem Yadolik. If you say it by heart, you might accidentally skip one of the spices. Shem Yadolik Akon be Samamanim. Vamrinan, and the Gemara says increases Vavam and Aleph, Shu Chaiv Misam Khisar Achas Misamel. If somebody actually manufactured the Ktiris and burnt the Ktiris on the Mizbah and skipped one of the ingredients, he's Chaiv Misa. And your Amira is instead of the Haktara. So if you do the Amira and you skip one of the spices, Oive, terrible. So therefore, be very careful to say it inside. Further, says the Ramah, and now we get to why Nusach Ashkenaz doesn't say Enkelikeno on a daily basis. The Ramah said earlier that we should say Pita Bakhtires every day. 
and we should say it twice a day, once in the morning, once in the evening. The Sakachkinaz doesn't say it all week. They only say it on Shabbos and on Yom Tiv. Says the Ramah, V'lachein nohagu shaloy la'am rebechayl. That's why we don't say Pita Makteris during the week. Why? Shememarin l'malachtan. Because people are in a rush to get to work. V'chayshinon shemi yedoleg. And we're afraid maybe they'll skip one of the spices. And if they skip one of the spices, Ochen vei. Finally, the Ramah closes out the simon and he says, Ultimately, when it's time to leave Shul, Omar, you should say the Pasuk, Hashem Necheni, and Umeshtachave, uh, and you should bow down, Vyoitse, and go out, Derech Kovet. And this Pasuk, Hashem Necheni, Tehillim, Kapitel Hey, Pasuk Tes. The Pasuk is, Is actually a mistake. It is not Tehillim Hay. Oh no, 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 no. It is Tehillim Hay Tes. Hashem Necheni Bitzit Kasecha, guide me in your righteousness, Laman Shoiriroi, because of my enemies. In other words, I'm going out into the world and I know that I have enemies. Haishar Lefanai Darkecha. Make straight before me your way. So this is a, a pasuk where David Amalek is asking the Rabbi Shalom, help me that I should guide me, that I should go in your righteous ways. And because of my Laman Shayurai, because of my enemies. Some want to say it's talking about the Yetzahara. I'm going out in the world, the Yetzahara is chasing me. Hashem Nechani Bezit Kasecha. Harishar Lafanai Darkecha. Make straight before me your ways. Meaning, that it should be easy for me to go in your way. So we should say this before we go out into the world, says the Ramah. Okay? Now, the Ramah said over here, this fascinating idea that the minig is not to say Pita Bakteris every day, the Ramah's minig, not to say Pita Bakteris every day. Why? Because it would be geferlich if we would skip one of the spices. Because... If somebody manufactures the Ketaris and brings it on the Mizbeach and skips one of the spices, he's Chayv Misa. And our Amira of the Parsha of the of the Maisek Ketaris, stands in the place of burning it on the Mizbeach. So we have to be very careful not to skip one of the spices. That's why he says, be careful to read it inside. So the Ramah says, and because of that, the minute became not to say it every day. Because people are in a rush, they're going to work, they might say it rushed, they might skip one of the spices. Says the Mishnah is cut Yudzayin Shem Yedalik or be Beis Yosef be Fakfik Pose. The Mechaber in the Beis Yosef takes issue with this. Ta'aloi ain Misa ela b'Haktara. What is the Chi of Misa? If you say Pita Bakteris and you skip one of the spices, the Chi of Misa is only if you're actually burning it on the Mizbeach. Va'oi de ain Misa ela b'Mezid, and the Chi of Misa is only if somebody does it b'Mezid. Lachain therefore Hamadaktikin. Rabbi Tzchayim says those who are careful. In their Shmiras HaMitzvahs, Nehagin La'amroi B'chal Yoyim, brings down from the Magen Avram that the Medaktikid B'Mitzvahs have the minute to say Pita Bakteris every day. V'yesha Kosu, and there are those that write to Oisin She'ein Oim Rak B'Shabbos, that the ones who only say it on Shabbos, Ein Margolah B'Bumayu Kolkach, and they actually have a bigger problem because they're not used to saying it all the time. Yoyimu B'Tach HaSidr, they have to make sure to say it inside because they're not used to saying it. The ones who say it every day, they're used to saying it. They don't have to be, don't have to look inside. Finally, when you go out of shul, you should bow and go out. When they finish the avoida, they would bow before they went out. And he tells us to take a look in the Muggen of Ram. So today, basically, we dealt with, yesterday, we learned about Olenu, the godless of Aleinu, after Aleinu Kaddish Yosem. Now the Ramah told us about the Pita Bakteris, interesting Nusach Svard, that says Pita Bakteris every day. Where do we say it? We say it before Aleinu. Well, that makes sense, because we saw that the Avoid of the Kteris is attached to the Karban Tamid. So really, we want to attach the Maisi Kteris to the Davening. No, so Ashrei Lam Nitzayach that represents the end of the davening. 
then we say Ein with the Maisak Teres, right? And then we close it out with Aleinu. Now, again, Nusuk Sfarid says the Shir Shal Yoim before Aleinu, not after Aleinu. Um, in the Seder of the Ramah, it, it sounds from the Ramah almost like Ein and the Yoim would both come after Aleinu. But again, there would be no reason to put Aleinu between the Tvila and the Maisek Teres. I guess that's why even the Sakashkinas, when they do say in Kelikedu, they say it before Aleinu. The Shir Shal Yoim, they put after Aleinu. That's interesting. I don't know why. I have to look into it. Why the Shir Shal Yoim comes after Aleinu. The Shir Shal Yoim is also attached to the Tamid because that's the Shira that the Levium sang over the Karban Tamid. I would think that the Shir Shal Yoim should also be connected to the Tvila. So it should also be before Aleinu. I'm not sure why it's after Aleinu. I have to look into that. Okay. Thank you for joining me for Lima Natari. The discussion of Lima Natari should be making a God's Chai Yisrael, the Baruch Hashem Shetzen, Yeshua, Sefuas, Parnas, Shadukim, to all those in need. We should be Zaychet to see the B.S. Gael Tzedek, the Meher of the Amenu. Amen. Be well.